Hey everyone, my name's Tony. I'm doing this video as a review of the Boss uh, number four, two and three quarter inch shorty. People aren't familiar with Boss shot shells. It's a newer company, American made, copper plated bismuth shot. Uh, the reason that I bought this is I have an older Browning Auto 5, 1950s, uh, later 50s vintage um, that I had Carlson's choke do the true choke conversion. And because of the barrel diameter, it took the smaller diameter or what they call the thin wall true chokes, which you can't shoot steel with. So I did get the extended chokes on that, which are good for bismuth and copper plated shot. And I'm going on a snow goose hunt. This is uh, mid-February right now, going to Missouri in a couple weeks. And I thought I want to take this great gun out there in the field and, you know, just try and get some shooting with it and get this boss it, my brother and i had freelance for snows for a number of years last year he had some uh, three inch number threes we didn't get a lot of opportunities but the the couple that he got i mean he stoned them uh that was it i mean he hit them and they dropped so i was pretty impressed in the field so thought let me give it a let me give it a whirl so i bought a flat right which is 200 shells for boss they don't use the standard convention Took it out with the tightest constriction I had was uh, mod 0.710. Uh, went to 40 yards, figuring probably some longer shots with snows, going on a guided hunt. And let me just make sure, you know, we're good. And it wasn't good. You know, it, was, uh, it wasn't a really good pattern. Moved into 30 yards was a much better pattern. Moved into 20 yards. So I just kind of decided I want to get a, a tighter constriction choke. But also, let me go ahead and go a little bit more in depth. I've got a couple other shotguns. So what I did was uh, a pattern test with um, the Auto 5. I have a factory improved modified barrel. And then I have the other barrel, which had the true choke system put in it. And I had gotten a Colonial Arms. Uh, when I bought it off for Brunel's, it was advertised as an extended range, extra full choke. Uh, after I ordered it, um, while I was waiting for it, I found Colonial Arms site. And they actually say it's extra full with steel it's actually also a 705 construction. So I had two, you know, the same thing in two different barrels, but I thought I'd check it out. I also have a, a Super Black Eagle um, that I wanted to try. I've got Carlson Extended uh, Full Choke, which is a 695 construction. And I have a newer generation A5, which I could do a whole video on how not to get screwed over on Gunbroker. <laughs> but I got a brand new barrel for that. I ordered a, a Pattern Master Anaconda. I have a Pattern Master long range um, for the Super Black Eagle, but from what I had seen that Boss says don't use the stud ring technology chokes um, with the gun, so, or with the shot shells. So I'm gonna kind of go over, it was more than just the patterning. Uh, one of the things I did, I did uh, double check constrictions. So I just used my little handy uh, dial indicator. You know, I've done some reloading. I picked it up a number of years ago. It's a great thing to have. And then also, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a big online shopper. I found a Midway a couple years back on a Black Friday sale, this uh, Ballistic Products uh, Caldwell Chronograph. I just had to do some rifle reloading. It was very beneficial for that. I also wanted to check the uh, velocity on the Boss Shot Shells because when you get their data, they've got a feet per second curve based on temperature. You know, 1350 is the factory um, velocity on them but had seen some different posts where people were saying well, supposedly it drops off. So I thought, well, let me put this thing up. I'm going to have it, see, see how it goes um, through all three of these guns. And so that's what I went through. But before we get into the patterning, I did a couple other things. Um, I cut a shell apart. So this was a new one, and I counted the BBs. I counted the pellets. Uh, there are 188 pellets in a uh, number four pellets in a shell. Kind of see them right here. But here's one thing I wanted to show, try and, and get it. I don't know if, how good of a, a, a zoom I can get on it. This is a fractured pellet that was in there. So this is one pellet that's fractured. So that was one thing with a little bit of concern at seeing something that's fractured right out of the gate. We know bismuth is a little bit more um, brittle. The second thing is with the wads, as you can see, I just happened to cut it there. I cut it right at the bottom of the top of the wad. It is not a full length wad. 
So this is a standard two and three quarter. I shot just some other steel because the Colonial Arms Choke, the other reason I got it is it is rated for steel. As I had said, the thin walls that I got from Carlson are not steel rated. The Colonial is steel rated. And they said the construction's on the outside of the tube so I just can shoot regular steel. But here's a comparison of a standard two and three quarter wad to the boss wad with length. So, you know, you've got roughly, I will measure it right now. You know, the boss, the boss wad is like 1.43 and a standard two and three quarter inch wad is 1.715 so about three tenths of an inch a third of an inch less okay so then when i cut the shell open i counted the number of pellets it's 188 number four pellets in the ounce and a quarter load so then i just kind of dumped some in here it's like well we've got now pellets that are not protected by the wide I'm not a wide engineer. I'm not a shot shell designer. I can only go off of what I read on the internet, right? And we know Abraham Lincoln says, don't believe everything you read on the internet. So I, I filled this up, dumped it out, and I counted it, and it's about 51 pellets, okay? So out of 188, 51, or more than 25%, less than 25%, I'm sorry, between 20 to 25%, really have no wad as they're going down the barrel. So they're going down the barrel, direct contact, of the, you know, some, some number of those pellets around the outside are going down the barrel, direct contact with the barrel. So that may or may not mean anything, but what I also noticed was looking at this wad, I recovered all four wads. And you may, or if I can get this up here properly, see that there were pieces of pellet inside. Some of them have fallen out. You know, so to me, kind of a little bit of a concern right away that, you know, there's part of the pellets are still in the wad and there's about 20, you know, over 20% of the payload goes down the barrel without a wad protecting it. And then when it exits, you know, it is, it's separate from the wad. So it would be interesting to see a slow motion camera, you know, have, have read some other um, shot patterning um, stories, you know, reviews, and they talk about what they call wad blow through, where in some cases the wad actually passes through the pattern blowing it out. I recovered all four of the wads. I shot four shells, you know, four boss shells, recovered all four of the wads. Three of them were, the, were within 10 to 15 feet of the pattern board. So 40 yards is the range that I used. Three of them were in 10 to 15 feet of that. One of them was mid distance. Um, so I think that's because one of the chokes that I used was a Pattern Master Anaconda. You know, this is not the stud, it's what Pattern Master, their newer gas technology where there's some rings inside there that supposedly the gas goes by and, and counter spins the wad and reverses it to, to help with separation. This is the Colonial Arms Super Steel. Again, I did check it, it's a 0 0.705 construction. This is my Carlson's, uh, one of a number of Carlson's extended chokes that I have. This is a full. It is rated for, you know, steel, copper, um, heavy metal, heavy shot, 0.695 construction. So temperature was in the lower 20s. The boss shot, I keep it in the basement. You know, I don't keep my shot in a freezer, my shells in a freezer. So for the temperature test, I just put it in a, in a blind bag, put it in the back of my truck, and then timed how long till I actually started shooting the boss shells, and it had been about an hour. So when I got to the range, my gun club, I just threw my bag on, a, on top of the snow, had it open. So they were out in ambient temperature in the mid-20s for about an hour. So I'm going to go over the four patterns that I have, the two with the Auto 5, the one with the Super Black Eagle, the one with the A5, and then I'm just going to show you what you know kind of has been my try, what I've been using for snows for the and, and even Canada's uh, when I've gone you know in in early season uh, gone to Canada a couple times what I use there. So the first one is with 
the colonial arm. Okay, so velocity was 1,258 out of the 1,350, 1,258, and at 40 yards out of 78, um, 188 pellets, I'm sorry, got 78 on target, and really not a good pattern, you know, in my opinion, you can see it, there's a lot of holes in it, so it's not something that I would, you know, make a first shot at 40 yards. Okay, then I did the factory browning. Again, this is a, you know, I think a 1950s vintage improved modified barrel. Actually, a little bit better. <laughs> 95 pellets, you know, on target. I'm kind of looking through the back to make sure it's centered. But, I mean, it's a, it's a pellet count that's higher. I mean, we're up to close, almost, you know, just over 50%. However... You know, again, it's really, in my opinion, is not a great pattern. You can see there are a lot, a lot of holes in it. Um, you know, and the one thing as I'm going to go in is you can see, it, it's not going to be difficult to see a lot of areas there's little peppers. So I was pretty generous with counting the pellets. And when I say a little pepper, what I'm talking about is like right here in this circle area, You've got less than a pellet. It's something that's less than the size of a pellet hole. There are a lot of um, irregular holes, so it really appeared that there were pieces of shot. Um, the bigger ones, I counted it because it was bigger. It would have penetrated. It was something I had seen in some other reviews. Guys talked about it looked like the shot was fragmenting. So definitely something that I would say continue to see. This is the Super Black Eagle using the Carlson's full tip. Okay, here, a little bit, I mean, a little bit better, 100, you know, I mean, 100 pellets, so well over 50%, you know, 100 pellets in here. Let me make sure I'm still in. Uh, you know, the pattern's a little bit better. It's shot off, so I did center it. It shot off to the left, so I did center it on where it hit. Um, you know, not horrible, definitely a lot better on the top side than the bottom side. You know, but it was, you know, we're definitely get, getting better, you know, with the full. And that was one thing that the boss site says will go down in constriction. Um, I'm, I have an extra full and I have a, a, actually a turkey choke for the Super Black Eagle. You know, my concern on, you know, if I choke this down to have that much denser pattern at 40 yards, is you know what happens at 20 yards um, I'm going to show up or what happens at 10 yards so this is the very first patterning I did with the modified did it on Christmas paper uh, this is at this one was at 30 yards okay I had I think it was 94 in a regular modified uh, pattern was a little bit better, but still not not the best. So that same choke, this is 20 yards. All right, 143, 143 pallets on target. Uh, huge hole there. It's probably where the wad hit. Um, the reason I would not want to go with an even tighter construction is. You know, I've had opportunity to, to hunt, you know, field ducks in a field. And I had one I hit at 10 yards uh, with the Super Black Eagle with an IC, a number four shot. I mean, till it, it got done doing its little juking coming in and locked in that I had a steady shot on it. It was probably 10 yards and I had a half a duck. So I would not want to really choke down out of that concern that some, you know, you get a close shot and you just wind up with a pile of feathers. So... Next is, and last of the bosses is with the A5, you know, with the Pattern Master. Again, it shot, this was only the second time I've actually shot this. I'd, I'd like to shoot it again um, because I'm going to move over here. I think there's a lot of promise. Uh, you look at this pattern, 103 hits on target, a lot more of what I would say is an even distribution. There's still pretty big hole on the, the lower end. You know, three of the three of the quadrants have 
some pretty big holes. Uh, the biggest one there on it would be the lower the lower right, but definitely a lot fuller pattern, but a lot more fragmentation. So, kind of looking to wrap things up, I'm going to throw up a comparison. So this has been my standard load, um, you know, for snows or for, for geese, if it's going to be longer shot. It's a, the Super Black Eagle with the pattern, the original Pattern Master long range, which I didn't grab. I don't know which one it is now because they've got a number of them, the Code Black Goose, Code Black Duck. I'm not sure which one it would go to. But this is a Kent number, th uh, Kent number one, three inch. So Kent fast field, 1450 feet per second. And this is what I'm, I'm usually shooting, right? This is 88 pellets on target. And, you know, except for the one area is a pretty consistent pattern. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> when I say I don't know, I mean, I had uh, the, the pattern actually for the same Kent number ones out of the A5 with the Anaconda it looks really promising. That was the very first time I had shot it. I pulled it. But just in one of the 24-inch squares, I mean, there's 85 pellets just in one 24-inch square. If I extend it out 30 inches to the one side, it was really off to the one side. It's over 100. So I, I want to go do that one again. Um, for me, you know, the boss is, the flat is, it was 200, $255 with free shipping to my door. Uh, 200 shells, you know, like a buck, a dollar thirty a shell. Uh, those Kent Fast Steels, when I bought them, I got them, I think, for $149, free shipping, $250. So, you know, you're talking $0.60 to $0.70 cents, um, a shell, not even that, you know, a little bit less. A shell with what I think is, you know, pattern that's going to kill a goose, you know, at 40 yards. Um, I, I like the boss because it at 30 yards it was it was a really good pattern. I, I felt that on those improved mods it would be better. Um, I don't know these guys that are talking about killing birds at, at 50 yards. I don't know what they're using for a choke. Um, I'm digressing a little bit. What I didn't like was seeing that wad. You know they they don't use a full wad. Um, it was kind of surprising. It would be nice if uh, they would look at that. I don't know. I'm not sure it's going to have some pellet count loss, but if it's you know, maintaining the integrity of the pellets, you know, in flight, I think that would be better, my opinion. Uh, the other thing that I noticed when I looked through those pellets and counting them, probably at least 10% of them, there's some kind of flaw with the plating where you can see bismuth. So you don't have a full copper plate on the pellet. Um, they are spherical. They're not perfectly round. I mean, they're kind of wonky. Um, you know, I'm going to take them I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to take some of them. Most likely I'm going to save them for, you know, duck. If I get to go to Canada, you know, this year, um, I think they would be good out there. You know, a lot of the shooting that we've gotten and birds decoy really well. So a lot of shots inside of 30 yards, I think this would be a great, you know, great 30 yard, um, on snows, on specs. Uh, but you know, going out to like 40, I, for me, that's my results. You know, I, I wouldn't use them if I knew for sure I was doing it at 40. I wouldn't do a first shot at 40 um, just because of the, you know, with I'm, I'm rambling on. That's the information. We're going to cut it short. Hey, hit me up with a comment. Um, you know, what I'm going to do next is I, if, if you want to see it, I do have some heavy X, which I've had like lights out result with that stuff. Um, so I'm going to try the heavy X in the Auto 5. I'm going to try the heavy axe with, uh, with the Anaconda, and if things go good, um, I'm going to see if I can find another home for my Super Black Eagle rather than make it a safe queen. Thanks for watching. Take care.